Welcome back to Garage Time. I'm on a roll. Let's go check out the to-do list. Okay, this is my first drive to-do list. I really want to drive my car and this is everything that needs to be done. I'm looking at the brakes today. Hopefully I'm going to install the e-brake hardware and the rear rotors. Yeah, there are no screws in the rotor here holding it on. Okay, I didn't realize it, but this has already got all the e-brake hardware in it. Just using the, the metal conditioner here on this rusty hub. Cleaning up these parts just a little bit, making sure nothing's missing, but I'm gonna check the parts diagram. So far, I think this is easier than I thought. Things are looking pretty good on this. This is a steel wool. Here's how this looks so far. I'm just starting to, to break through the rusty parts on this hub. So I'm going to do another application. It doesn't need to be all shiny, but it does need to be a pretty level surface so the rotor can sit flat. That's all I'm after. Okay, the hub now is, is pretty clean. You can see the rust converter really highlights the rust that's left over in kind of the hard to reach areas, but that will not affect the hub or the rotor. So this is okay. And then I also did the, uh, the metal conditioner here on this sort of area that the paint has flaked off and it had a little bit of rust on there. So I did the rust converter on that. I'm just gonna just brush a little bit of black paint on there just to prevent it from corroding again.
This paint is my same recipe I used in the spray gun. It's Rust-Oleum with a hardener in it. This happened to be reduced for my spray gun, so I thought it was gonna take a couple coats, but it actually did okay. And then you saw me touch up a little bit of this undercoating in here and the trailing arm. It had some overspray on it. You can see that torsion bar bracket is all the overspray still on it. We didn't do a lot of masking with Mario just to save on some cost, but it's easy to just touch this up with a brush. Easy to maintain. It's just Rust-Oleum, and I think it's not that hard. Just cleaning up a lot of these little break bits here in this bucket with solvent and brushing, wire brushing. This stuff comes pretty clean. It doesn't really need to be replated in my opinion. This is a uh, driver quality restoration on these parts. And now it's time to put everything back together. This has had some time to dry. It's been about 10 hours since this morning, so it's pretty late right now. So I'm just gonna get everything installed, hopefully. I'm finding this section a little tricky to install. So these are the spreaders of the brake shoes. So when you actuate the emergency brake, it sort of pushes these open. So I have this kind of welding rod kind of keeping everything aligned. And there's the same spreader on the opposite side. And both of them have to be on these pegs, both, both rear and front. So I'm trying to keep everything together. I got to get the back one on first and then the front one on second. So that's what I'm struggling with. I don't know if there's a better method. I'm just trying to uh, figure it out. Okay, it took some fiddling around to get this spreader over these two pegs. And so what I ended up doing is using a screwdriver right in between here. This pries the brake shoes open and then you can barely get the back side on first. And then I did the front side second. And you know, it's a little hard to show and hard to explain. It just takes a little bit of fiddling around with. There might be a better procedure to do that, but eventually this cable here is gonna hold it in position once I get the nut on it. Okay, right now I'm dealing with a very damaged uh, cable here. This has two lock nuts on it, but the lock nuts are completely, you know, ground down because it's probably been drug on a trailer or on a tow truck or something. This is, these nuts are completely ground down. The threads are even ground down right here. The cable still moves freely, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to save this one. I'm just trying to break these nuts loose with some vice grips and I got them to separate a little bit. I'm gonna have to slice this nut to see if I can get this off. Okay, now I just gotta do the same thing to this end. 
This is the end of the cable and it's also been ground flat. It looks like it's not done on purpose. It's probably just been drug along the street or something. So this side of the threads are okay, but there's about you know, 30, 40% of it that's just ground off all flat. If I do order some parts, I'll just get a new one of these cables. But for now, I'm able to continue. Okay, so I think I'm ready to install this for good. Loosen this all the way up. I did find this spacer tube, which is important. There's a special castellated nut that goes on the end of the adjustment cable and a washer. Okay, now that this adjuster mechanism is locked in, I don't want those tabs to come apart. Now I'm gonna put the spring on this side. Hopefully I can get this in. Now oh, there we go. And then the last thing is the adjuster. So I should, there's little tangs on the end here, but I should be able to spread it open and get the adjuster in. Okay, the, the star adjuster goes up. So. There we go. All right, that's it. Okay, here's a quick summary of the assembly procedure. So I put in the lower shoe with its spring and cup. So you can see the spring and cup down here. I put that in first, that held the bottom shoe in place from just falling. Then I put this spring in right here and left this shoe loose because without the spring, this upper shoe being loose, you'll never get that spring in. So you'll you see how I twisted it up after the spring is in, that allows it to sit on this perch right here. Then I um, put in the, the spreaders and I did that with the use of this bar. This bar sort of holds things in place from just falling down. And I tried to secure the bottoms first and then the back and then this one last. And it's really just a difficult procedure. Don't forget there's a spring that goes in between here. Um, but I found that using some screwdrivers, getting the lower ones on, and then just spreading this open and snapping it in from the back, it should hold itself in place. And then it's obviously easier to do the outer one because you can kind of see what you're doing. Once that adjuster was in, I put the cable in and the nut on so that all doesn't fall apart. It's under tension with the spring inside and it also is under tension with this guy. Once that was in, I put this spring and held this shoe in place so that doesn't move. And then I put this spring in right here. This one is a little different spring end design and a bigger hole. So this one actually is pretty easy to just clip in with regular pliers once the shoes are in place. This one is much harder. Do this one first. And then I just stuffed the adjuster in by spreading this open by hand and just pushing it in. You can see how it's got some little little uh, ends on it so it doesn't slip out. That's the procedure that I found works well. I'm not saying there's not a better procedure out there, but this is a little bit cumbersome and difficult to get mostly that rear spreader in place without it falling off. Oh, also last thing guys, don't forget to install this cotter pin in here to lock this nut in place so it doesn't just vibrate loose. Now, the one I have in here is not the right size. I can't push it all the way through or something's, it's, I think it's an um, a English one and I need a metric one. So I need to go to the store and get a smaller cotter pin. But this is loose here just to remind me that that needs to be put in. And then this is a brand new rotor. And it's gonna go just like this. Okay, this rotor is brand new. It is thicker than the stock rotor for this car. This is from the Carrera. So Carreras are, I think, you know, 84 to 89 or something like that. Uh, so these have more mass to them for better cooling and just better performance overall. So that's um, 
what the calipers work with, and so that's why I had to buy new rotors. couldn't find the correct screws for attaching the rotor. So these are temporary. I made myself a note up here to, you know, replace the cotter pin, uh, find some flathead screws and torque the big nut right here. This one doesn't have a cotter pin either. So I know this is probably not torqued correctly. This cannot fall off. So that's part of uh, my little note here to myself. We'll get that done when the car's on the ground. Okay, that's install e-brake hardware done. Buy new rear rotors done and install rear calipers. Okay, that's five done, 34 more to go. Make sure you hit that little bell notification because I'm releasing videos rapid fire right now. I'm really motivated to get this car on the road and get all these little things done. No matter how difficult they are, I'm just powering through. Take care. Mm -hmm.